In this video, I will introduce you to the contact analysis uh, series of lectures that we will follow for this week. We will start with the discussion of general what is contact. Of course, this is quite simple to answer for most of us, but we will answer this question in the context of what is contact that we consider in the finite element analysis, in, especially in solid mechanics. Why exactly is it a nonlinear phenomena? Why do we consider it to be a nonlinear problem in general? How do we apply it to FEM? That's also very important to us to understand with how do we apply it to an FE analysis when a contact happens. Then we will continue to discuss certain conditions or very simple cases to include friction and not to include friction, of course, friction and frictionless contact and how we take into account these um, definitions in general. And uh, finally, we will also look at uh, the definition of contact in the context of a finite element program. So let's start off first with the definition of contact. Now, the contact problem is a geometrically nonlinear problem, and that's something we've already established from day one. Now that the contact arises when different structures or different surfaces of structure of the same structure that is. So let's consider that these are two different bodies and the contact problem will happen when these two different bodies or these two different structures are going to be in contact with each other, whether they come in contact and they separate after they come in contact or whether they come in contact and they slide with uh, on top of each other and the sliding could happen with friction. So these are the conditions that we have to consider within a contact problem. Now the contact doesn't only apply to two bodies, different structures that come in contact, but also different surfaces of the same structure that may come in contact with each other. Now the location and the extent of the contact may or may not be known to the user in the beginning. And therefore, it is very important to have a generalized description of contact to be taking place within a finite element analysis. So the, uh, the, there are certain ways of representing this contact that occurs between structures or between surfaces in a mathematical format, which is what I would like to uh, introduce to you through this lecture. Now, contact is one of the most complicated problems in nonlinear analysis in general. So, of course, we are not going to go into very great details of all the different kinds of uh, definitions. But the way I would like to explain it to you is to start from a very simple problem. And once you understand the baseline of this very simple problem, you would be able to apply the methodology and the knowledge to how exactly it happens between uh, complicated surfaces under complicated conditions. So, so this is generally a description of how contact is happening. This is just basically contact. Of course, two bodies come close to each other and they are too close or they are touching and therefore contact will appear. But what does this mean mathematically for us in terms of modeling? What it means in terms of modeling is that when two bodies come in contact with each other, then there are tremendous amounts of contact forces which are generated. And these contact forces will occur in both the bodies over the surface which is in contact. That means because of the force which is acting, it can be attraction, it can be a normal force, there will be of course a displacement which will occur in your body. So want to look this shouldn't look like an N, so I'll write it again as a U. There will be a displacement that will occur in the body. That means we are making changes in stiffness. So as and when the contact forces will increase or decrease, there will be sudden and very large changes in stiffness in the entire structure or in the assembly of these two structures or two surfaces that will come in contact with each other. So the large and the sudden changes in stiffness actually define the nonlinear situation that come into picture in contact analysis. 
Of course, these changes can be large, these changes can be small. However, they are quite sudden as well. Now, once we have defined contact conditions, and now we know why there is a nonlinear situation that occurs in contact analysis, we should consider a very simple example problem to understand how exactly uh, for a one dimensional case does this work. Let's consider this uh, simple example of a, uh, a mass, yeah, just an object which is uh, attached to a spring. So you have a little object over here which is attached to a spring and it's hanging from a ceiling for example. There is a force P that is applied on the object or it can also be the self weight of the object. The stiffness of the spring that it is hanging from is given as K. It is present on, it is hanging about a distance G from the ground. The displacement that the mass undergoes is given by d. Now in this condition, in this case over here which is simply defined with one uh, mass hanging from a spring which is of a stiffness k, we know that if the deformation of this object is d and if d is the same as this gap which exists between the object and the ground, then contact will happen. So we can say that if D becomes equal to G, contact occurs. We can also say that the force that is applied on this object can be given as K, which is the spring stiffness times this distance, which is given as G. Now the force therefore that is required for D to be equal to G is given as Kg, clearly over here. And if P is increased, beyond this point, even by a large amount, nothing will change. There's no change that will happen. If this load is applied, then your spring will stretch and your mass will come down and be in contact with the ground and nothing else happens. Now, let us explain this in a slightly different way. Let us say we have the same system that we defined before with this spring and this object and there is a load P acting on it and has to undergo a certain displacement D and it is at a distance G from the ground. Now I want to introduce a new spring which is present between the object and the ground and the stiffness of this spring can be given as Kc for example. Now I can already tell you that the stiffness of this spring Kc is nonlinear because Kc is going to be equal to zero when the displacement of this mass or this object is less than g because it doesn't play any role. However, Kc will be very high, so I'm writing it as infinite, but what I want to say is it, it would be extremely high when d is greater than g. So there is the situation where when the displacement reaches g there will be a increase in stiffness of the system because this nonlinear spring is going to assume a stiffness which is extremely high. Right and that is something you are able to understand by looking at this uh, problem over here. So if I want to push this spring downwards of course until and unless the D is equal to G, the KC will have no resistance. But the moment the object comes in contact with the bottom surface, then the KC will become infinite because it wants to, because there is this force which is acting on the ground as well as in the mass, which, is, which has to be countered. And those are coming from the contact forces and they will become extremely high. So in the previous case, if the force P was less than k times g which was stiffness of the upper spring times the gap then we could say that the force was equal to k times the displacement at any given point and if p became greater than this k times g then we could write that the p was equal to k plus kc which was both the springs now times the displacement at that point therefore in a graphical format 
we can represent this for load versus displacement to be given as when p when it is p is less than k times g we can say that it was here is k and it would go up to the point where up to the point of d becoming equal to g because you have k times g over here so up to a certain point where we did not have um, where we get g over here let's say this is g there would be an increase in the stiffness because it's given over here as k plus kc so you would have an increase so this is k plus kc and this is the point of the sudden increase of stiffness which accounts for the non-linear behavior of a contact analysis now in this case it is um, this this condition where we have applied uh, the spring in terms of um, just checking whether the constraint is greater than or less than something uh, we have to make sure that there we have to understand that there may be some difficulties that come into picture yeah so in this case if i want to write it formally i can say that the constraint that is applied over here is that when d is less than equal to g yeah you have applied this constraint you have enforced this constraint in a penalty fashion enforced in penalty fashion so this is one of the methods that we have discussed for linear modeling uh, that you apply in a penalty condition a certain constraint now in this case if the kc is too small then the gap is going to overclose which means that in our problem over here it there may be a situation where instead of having the block stop at the ground it will actually over close into the other surface this is the condition when kc is too is very little has very little stiffness on the other hand if kc so we can call this con condition overclosure but on the other hand if kc is extremely large or very very stiff then there are problems which can cause bouncing and we will uh, suffer from convergence failure because the numerical solution will alternate just between d is less than g and d is equal to g and what we will notice over here is that there will be some behavior such that it jumps between the two states and causes convergence problems of course one of the methods that we have already discussed before to take care of or get rid of these dynamic uh, conditions is by means of using automatic stabilization techniques so this was approximately enforcing a boundary condition or a constraint in a penalty fashion however if you want to exactly enforce a constraint such as d is less than equal to g then you can make use of the lagrange multipliers this is also something we have discussed in linear modeling so we won't spend too much time on it but this is one of the methods of applying constraints by taking an extra uh, equation into the problem so the constraint for by which is um, substituted into the problem by means of lagrange multipliers will be discussed now so we know that for p is e p is equal to kd when p is less than k times g so we can write for by in, in the method of lagrange multipliers we add a certain equation for p and uh, sorry so completely missing here a point so d with lambda and that would be equal to the force p and the gap g because you have d is less than equal to g is a constraint that you want to introduce so you can see over here that d is equal to g and lambda is equal to p minus k g this becomes these becomes the two equations coming from this problem and in the case of g of course you can also write lambda is equal to p minus k d where d would be the um, intermediate or the situation where d is the displacement 
at that time. Now this is the lambda is equal to p minus k d is called the force constraint which is applied as the Lagrange multiplier problem. Of course, you can also add other kinds of methods for uh, introducing constraints into the problem, which we have already dealt with before. But this is just a representation of how the stiffness is going to increase or decrease in cases of uh, overclosures and in cases of um, hard contact, etc. Now, when you apply this method over here, which is for uh, the Lagrange multiplier condition, then you can always have, you can always represent the, sp uh, the stiffness Kc, which is always active, right? Whether it's a Lagrange multiplier or penalty, sorry, it doesn't matter. But the spring stiffness Kc can always be active. And by means, when you want to have um, contact conditions, then they can increase at a certain point. So you always have an ad hoc non-linear stiffness which is present in your system which can be of a very small amount. If that is the condition then you would see that we can change the behavior slightly of your, of, of your structure over here and in that case you would get a behavior which is somewhat like this. But here this slope is of course k plus kg or kc which would be kc at this point and again k plus kc but you would notice over here that this section is not going to be abruptly changing but is only going to change by a small uh, curvature which means that it's not going to be a very very uh, sudden uh, non-linearity which is introduced into your system. It always makes sense to have a much better or much smoother transition for problems where there is a lot of material or a lot, lot of uh, objects that are coming in contact with each other. If there are multiple surfaces that are involved, it becomes much better. Also in the sense of degradation, so if you are going to lose material or crush material and break it down into smaller number of particles, then it's also better to have a slower change in the nonlinear stiffness.